But Mark Robinson, a busy summer that's starting to come to fruition now with signings. Talk us through the two big signings we've made. Yeah, well, obviously, Luke McCormack, so um, the recruitment team put together uh, a list of names, you know, so that I could watch the clips, etc. So they put a, a list of names together as soon as the season was finished, or before the season was finished. And Luke was top of that list, um, so he was my, my main target in that position. So I presented to, to Luke weeks ago, you know, it must be five, five, six weeks ago, and at the time it, it felt the right thing to do because you get in there early. The presentation went really well, absolutely loved him as a lad and everything he's about, um, and his agent was great as well. So, you, But then, of course, football is football. There's loads of interest and to in and fro in, and, and you kind of wonder if you're gonna gonna get your man, but I'm, I'm so chuffed that um, he's come and, you know, we had to be patient. And thank you for Joe and that for being creative with it as well, you know, but um, we had to be patient, but I think us remaining professional throughout the whole process and not badgering the lad and letting him make his decision you know, and, and dealing with the agent has, has, has helped us get him, and it's a it's a fantastic signing for us. You know, it's a, it's the sort of signing that we've never made before. So, um, you know, lots to be excited about. And the other signing will be a player who's really familiar to Wimbledon fans. Tell us all about him. And yeah. who it is first of all, well, Darius Charles. Yeah. So, um, Darius and I were were really close when he was here at the first team. You know, we used to spend a lot of time after training just talking football talking about various things and we're very aligned in our thinking so we've always stayed in touch um, even when he's left we, we've stayed in touch regularly he's coming and done stuff with the academy and talk so it, it was just obvious to me when 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 I, I got the job it was someone I thought about straight away as you know I'm, I'm massive on trying to build this culture and this environment and you know um, a winning culture so I spoke to Darius and saw if he, if he, if he was up for it and he's, he's, he's absolutely as excited as I am. So in terms of playing terms, he'd be more as cover, if I'm honest. He's more than capable of, of, of playing, but I'm, I'm quite happy with the centre-back options that we've got. But Darius will be coming in if we need him there. But he's there to also embed everything around the changer and we're going to have by far the youngest squad in all four divisions. So he's going to be there as that experience. He's got four promotions under his belt. And that's what he'll be there for. As I said, we're completely in line with our thinking and, um, and we want to help him on his pathway as well towards coaching and what he wants to do. So it's, it's again, it's a fantastic signing in terms of what we want to do now and in the future. So we will get involved behind the scenes with the coaching aspects? Yeah, I mean, he'll be training with us and, um, you know, and as I said, he'll, he'll be available to play if need be. But he, he's also going to be just getting everything in line with the players. As I said, we've got a young squad. You know, and not everything's going to be simple, there's going to be ups and downs and as I said we're completely in lines of our thought process and how you go about things when things are good and also when things aren't so good. So it, you know, I don't want to say it'd be my eyes and ears in the dressing room because that might sound like some sort of secret agent piece. Uh, it, he would just be there helping the lads in the way that I believe young players need to be helped and motivated and, and so that they can perform to the best of their ability. You talked about Luke and the fans won't be as familiar with his skills and attributes. Yeah. What are the key things that he brings? Well, Luke, can, he can play anywhere in midfield, but I watched his clips and for me, he's an attacking goal-scoring midfielder. And when I presented it to him, that's how I presented it to him and that's how he sees himself and that's what excited him. So that's exactly where I see him. He's, he's a goal-scoring midfielder, but you know he's aggressive, he gets around the pitch, he's, he's hard-working, he's everything that you want from a Wimbledon player in terms of how he performs but how he is off the pitch as a person he's a he's a he's a football fan basically he comes from a football fan background so he completely you know a lot of people say oh they get us and I'm not always sure we know what that means when they say get us but he understands what we're about because he's a proper football fan himself and so he completely gets what it means to be a fan owned club and we've had long conversations about it he was talking to Carlo about it he's done his research and um on and off the pitch is exactly what we're looking for. And where it gets around in, in life and especially in football, um, do you hope that this signing of Luke and the Chelsea connection, you're trying to build something there potentially for more signings as well? Yeah, I mean, it's not just the Chelsea connection, it's, it's, it's working with the, the best, working with, with top quality. So, you know, when we're going into loans, you want to be going into the best. And, you know, I've presented to Chelsea and I've presented to six, seven other clubs as well. You know, we might not get targets this year, or but 
you, it's just building those relationships from the future. But at the same time, you know, we want to bring for our, our own lads as well. And, you know, so it's um, yeah, it's it's just it's just building those relationships and and, and making them realise what we're about, what we're going to do, so that you know, if we need a loan or or things like Luke, where we've taken him on a permanent, that we become. The, the club of choice, you know, and, and that's, ex that's exactly what it's all about. Really. On a different subject, can you bring us up to date with the situation with uh, our former player of the year, Terrell Thomas? Yeah, so Terrell won't be coming back with us. So I met Terrell uh, about six, seven days ago now. We sat down for a long chat and um, it was genuinely a tough decision for him. I think he'd made his mind up a long time ago that this was going to be his last season. That then changed. Um, that changed during the season. I think if he'd played in those last 21 games, I think possibly it might have been a different story. But we sat down and had a chat and I think he just felt it had that mind shift that he was going. And, um, and even though he could see big changes and that, he just had got his head around the fact that he was going to go and obviously he's had offers. So, um, you know, but Terrell's great and we had a, we had a long chat and it was... It was good, but unfortunately, you know, you, you win some and, and, and you don't. We wanted him to stay, and we wish him all the best. A player who you've had a real close connection with has also left us, uh, Archie Proctor. What can you yeah. tell us about him? So Archie, it was just a complete difference of opinion, but a good one, a, a good one. So I wanted Archie to go out on loan for another year. Um, you know, I don't like our young players not playing. Um, I think he was good enough to come into the squad. But I want our young players playing football. I've seen too many good young players at this club come in, not play enough football, and then they don't progress how they wanted. So I said to Archer, I wanted him to have another year on loan to play men's football, or, or, or possibly another year, but I wanted him to go out on loan. He felt that he, he, he should be in the squad, which is exactly how you want a young player to think. And um, so that's how he felt. So it was just a difference of opinion on it. He then got the opportunity to go to Accrington and be in their first team squad. You know, so I hope I'm wrong. I'm, I hope he goes there and he absolutely smashes it. I said it was completely amicable. Um, you know, oh, I are really, really close. I'll be in touch with him throughout. So it was just that. He, he, he felt he, he should be in the squad. I wanted him to go out and play his men's football and he's got this opportunity and he's taken it. But, you know, unlike previously, you know, we, we've, we've got paid for developing him and we will continue to get paid if he continues to do well. So we haven't lost out of it. I would, again, I would have loved him to stay. Of course I would, but my, my opinion is I, I want him to have more men's football before he comes into the squad. So it was just a difference in opinion and that's, you know, I have to stick with what I think and I'm glad he's sticking with what he's think. You know, we educate our academy lads to come up with loads of self-belief, so I, I hope he absolutely goes up there and smashes it. And how close did we come to land and George Jobson? Yeah, close, I think. Um, so, you know, we are where we are with resources, so we didn't think that we were going to get George. And then George rung me and sort of was keen to come back. And um, again, we had lots of chats because he loved it. He loved it here. Um, but then he's had, he's had other offers. And, you know, it's just the nature of the beast, sometimes where we are at the moment. And um, yeah, we had, we had a phone call and uh, he was quite emotional, but, but yeah, he's, he's taken another offer now and again, fantastic, he was fantastic for us last year and um, we wish him all the best and, um, and we'll have a replacement coming in very soon. That was it.